Hi, my name is Jen Rulon, and you may know me as Coach Jen. After knocking out 15 Ironman triathlons, I am an everyday healthy human just like you. In this podcast, we will discuss how to metamorphosize into an everyday healthy human through healthy physical habits and mindsets, as well as authentic living. Let's transform together in this journey called life and become the best everyday healthy human ever. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everyday Healthy Human Podcast. I am your host, Jen Rulon, and you may know me on the gram as Coach Jen. Well, today I'm going to finally talk about living in Costa Rica, because in episode one, if you've checked it out, that was actually the second to last podcast of season one. And that was me talking about why I moved to Costa Rica and just the attraction to Costa Rica, the factors that influenced my decision to move here, and then truly my personal motivation and experiences about Costa Rica as a one, as a visitor, and then two, as a expat living in Costa Rica. Episode two was in season two, I believe it's the first episode. This was all about planning the move to Costa Rica, whether that was looking at the legal aspects regarding if I needed a a visa run or residency options, or is it the 90 day stay or is it 180 day stay? And that has changed. Also financial planning, talking about currency, credit cards, and then job opportunities. And then once again, just my experience based on the legal aspects of what I've done to do border runs and then also about job opportunities. But as you know, I have been working online since 2013. So I am a considered a digital no man and I could pretty much work anywhere in the world Yes, I still pay taxes for the U.S. because I am a U.S. citizen, plain and simple. So today on episode three or part three, I want to talk to you all about living in Costa Rica and just some of the, oh, what do you call it? Maybe maybe not the so much the struggles, but just some, some of the differences of living in a country that I am not a Spanish, a full-on Spanish speaker yet, and we'll talk about some of the cultural differences and just some of the local communities, and then just talk a little bit about the daily life and living arrangements, because when I am on TikTok Live, a lot of y'all will ask about living arrangements and availabilities to live down here in Costa Rica. So let's talk and really dive deep about the language. As you know, it is a Spanish-speaking country. As you know, I am American that took Spanish, and here's the ironic thing about it all. I took Spanish, four years in Span- four years of Spanish in high school. I went to Spain. I learned the basics, but it was all about the memorization. And that's the crazy thing about learning that in Wisconsin. My teacher was phenomenal at speaking Spanish, but I I don't think she knew how to teach it, if that makes sense. And y'all, I was even the president of the Spanish club. (laughs) So I guess we have to recognize that maybe me being the president of the Spanish club was actually like a big picture of me living down here in Costa Rica, which I think is very humorous. But when I would come down to Costa Rica in the very beginning, I would practice my Spanish. I would try to talk to people in Spanish. But the great thing is, is that if you go to restaurants or if you're in a very well populated place, you're going to be able to speak English. But what I've recognized with the Spanish Spanish speaking culture is that if you even attempt or try to learn the language, then I can guarantee 
it's going to be so much easier for you. So something that I have done over the last two years of living down here, I took over 20 hours of Spanish at an, a school called Intercotoro in, in Samara, Costa Rica. And I did privates. I didn't end up taking, I didn't want to take any group classes because of the fact I felt like I was a little bit more advanced, but I would get really nervous about the speaking. And so I wanted to understand the language and learn the language with a one-on-one -on -one teacher. And I think some of the teachers really didn't know what to do with me because it's like I knew bits and pieces of it, but then I couldn't, I couldn't put the words together or I got nervous or I understood it, but I didn't know how to respond. And there was one teacher and she's still there, Carmen. Carmen was or is a phenomenal teacher. Her and I just clicked and we connected. And to me, it made so much sense for me. And one week I said to, I said to, to the school, I said, I want to take 10 hours in five days. I want to go hard and we got to go and we're, we're going, we're doing two hours a day. And then at one point, Carmen and I were in such a flow. We ended up doing two, 10 hours in four days because we just went, 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 went. And it's crazy how exhausting it is and how tired I, I was after those days because I learned so much. And when I would come back and I would try to work, I would be drained because my mind was thinking in Spanish and I would have to work in English. So right now, as my business is growing, as working with the everyday healthy women and men, finding themselves in their better version of their second part of their life through fitness, mindset, and nutrition, I'm having a hard time going and taking one-on-one -on -one sessions again. I found another teacher locally instead of going to the school. And it's been hard because I am so drained and so tired from working and then going out and surfing and lifting and all of that stuff that it's a little bit harder for me to really spend two hours on my Spanish individually. And that's something I really want to do and work on. But what I've been doing every night is I am on Duolingo and it's a, it's a great app. It's, it's good notification or it's, it's gamification. And I will put Duolingo link in there for you. I sign up, I pay for the year because I get, I get, it's like 75 bucks, I think y'all, but I get so much knowledge and my writing in Spanish is so much easier than my speaking and my comprehending is doing much better. But I think the one of the biggest things that I learned with Carmen is the verbs. And when I learned how to conjugate the verbs, the yo, to, el, ele, usted, nosotros, ellas, and ustedes, once I learned that and the verbs and the conjugation of those verbs, I was like, game on. So now it's getting to a point where one, I have to start speaking and practicing more and talk to my friends that who speak to me in Spanish and English. And I say, no English, I need to practice my Spanish. So it's me saying, all right, guys, stop, stop with the English. I got to practice Spanish. So it's possible when you come down here, I would highly recommend get on an app. I know there's other school apps, like, you know, um, language apps out there, but I would highly recommend taking some classes. If you do plan on coming and living down in Central America, take some classes at home. I did take a six week course in San Antonio online as well. And it was good, but I'm telling you that time with Carmen like she, I, she just understood me. I understood her and we had a beautiful flow and uh, shout out to Carmen if you're listening. But I told myself one day I will do a podcast in Spanish and that is the goal for sure. So learn the language, attempt the language when you come down here and then just ask them to go slow, 
despacio, por favor, despacio, despacio, uh, hablamos, por favor, speak slowly, please. That's all you have to do, right? Let's talk a little bit about the cultural cultural differences and just the local community. So it's interesting because if you look at the United States, I grew up in Michigan and lived in San Antonio. And it's crazy because I would see my mom and my brother maybe twice a year. And it's absolutely beautiful down here seeing these families connect. Don't get me wrong. These families will have disagreements and just like any other family, but they figure it out. And I'm sure there's things that I don't see or whatever, but every time there's a birthday party, there's a gathering, a holiday, you see everybody coming together regardless of the differences that they have. And that to me has been one of the most beautiful things that I have seen living down here because I am starting to recognize that with my own family. It made me recognize my time with my family in the States for those two months when my mom broke her hip really showed me how much I do love my family and how much I crave my family and my local family that I hang out with in, in Costa Rica. They have shown me the importance of living, not only through the love of one another, even though you might be bickering at each other, but through family connection, through, through food, through gathering, through life. It's not about the materialistic lifestyle. It's not about the big house on the hill and the fancy car. It's about connection. It's about spending time with family and friends. It's about going out to the sunset. And that is your TV. It's about going and connecting with humans. It's human connections. And that is what I craved over the last probably a couple of years. I started recognizing that within myself. And after a meditation about two weeks ago, I just let my journal flow. And the very first thing was to connect with humans again, to be in the presence of human. I love my job. I love being, you know, working out. I love talking to my clients online, but I miss that human connection, right? Whether it's with a, a lover, a friend, the fan, the local family, my family. And I am so excited that I am bringing my mom down here in May for Mother's Day. And I just cannot wait to show her this country and show her why I fell in love with the country. The family is going to open up their arms and they are just going to be so excited to meet her. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. There are cultural differences, right? I know that. But what I see with this culture is the love for one another the love for their country and the love of living. All right. And last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the insights in daily living. Yeah. Last year I did a really good job of living the pure Vita life and I didn't work much. I would go out surfing every single day. I would go work out. I did not have a very good organization of my calendar and not only did I, did I see that with, with my business, not only did I see that on the personal side, I also saw this in my business. And so when I realized that I needed to shift from the triathlon space into what I'm doing currently now, working with everyday healthy humans through fitness, nutrition, and mindset, it's been a beautiful shift. But the daily life, uh, you can make it out how you want it to make out, right? You can wait, wake up at 520 like I do with the roosters and I'll sit there. I'll be like, all right, up by six. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's get your coffee. Let's get your water. Let's go out to the beach. Let's meditate. And then by eight o'clock, bam, game on. Like I am on, on fire. Like I'm either working out, doing podcasts, you know, talking to clients, going surfing. Like that is my flow. I have to have that good solid flow, right? So you can be very pure Vita, but 
if you have to work, it's possible. And I talked about that with looking for jobs I in episode two. So, so go, go ahead and check out episode two. Let's talk a little bit about living arrangements because it's going to vary at every place there is. You can find renting from a local, a local, a local Tico, Tica, you might be able to find super cheap, 400, 500, 600 bucks a month. That may or may not include uh, electric Wi-Fi or water. Just depends, right? But you can also go to the very high extreme and you could find a house on the hill for a three bedroom, maybe two bath for a month for $2,000, for $2,500. It just depends on the area that you're at. I will tell you this, Nasara Playa Guiones, one of the probably the most expensive places to Airbnb and rent from. If you're going to go to Tamarindo, there's a lot of expats. It just depends on what you want. If you come down to Samra, it's going to be a little bit more localized, right? Even if you go south of Samra, it's going to be a little bit more local, but you really have to find those good places and connect with family of the local family. If you went to RNL, I'm sure there's a big difference from the RNL volcano, like being bought closer to the volcano, and but you're not by a beach. So it depends on where you want to be. I also know Manuel Antonio is very popular for a lot of expats because you could fly into San Jose and you're there really quick. Same with Tamarindo, same with Playa Flamingo, same with Playa Coco. Those are all on the Pacific sides. But if you're looking for on the other side of Guanacaste, where I'm at, and you want to go, if you want to fly into San Jose, you could go to Manuel Antonio, you could go to Jaco, you could go to Dominical and uh, Uvita are some of the very, very well popular places. But once again, you could also go to the Caribbean side. Caribbean side is going to be a little bit cheaper as well. But once again, you got to figure out, you can, you could go really cheap and be in a one bedroom, one bath with maybe no AC, no hot water, right? Might You might be able to find that, but you can also go really high. It just depends on what your budget is. All right, I'm going to wrap it up for part three. Once again, this was all about figuring out the language, the language barrier. We're going to, we were talking about the culture differences and really connecting with the local community and seeing exactly what they do. And then just talk about the daily living. If you have any questions, go ahead, ask those questions below in the podcast. I will put that in Spotify. Send me a message, DM me. You can email me at jen at jenrulan.com. Or you could go to my Instagram account, Coach Jen Rulan, and say, hey, Jen, I saw episode three of your Costa Rica. Can you give me some more feedback? We, let's get on a call. Let's talk about it. I'm easily available to knock out 15-minute call with y'all and just sort of figure it out. I will also put the link below. And if you want to chat with me about a possible move down to Costa Rica, let's get on a call. Let's see how I can help and help you maybe make your way down to Central America. With that said, y'all know what to do. Comments, reviews, shares, likes, because that's the only way for me to grow in the podcast world. What do I say? Pura Vida, y'all. Ciao.